Hello and welcome to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today to do a book haul revisit for the month of March. If you're unfamiliar, this is where I go back and look at book hauls from previous years that have taken place in the month of March and see how many of those books I have read, how many I have, I have unhauled, how many I would still like to read, and start the process of thinking about whether or not I want to hold on to some of these books or if I should release them and trade them in at my local used bookstore, things like that. It's my way of making myself more accountable for the books that I bring into my library. This is a significant book haul for me, at least, because when I first started my channel, 2019 was the first full year that I had a channel. And originally, I thought I didn't want to do book hauls because, you know, everybody does book hauls and I don't want to make people feel like they need to go out and buy books, you know, all of that stuff. But the fact of the matter is I do buy a fair amount of books and I like talking about them. So by March of 2019, I broke down and did my very first book haul, which means that March is the month that I, my book hauls have a new anniversary. So instead of doing four years of book hauls, I need to do five this year. 2023, 22, 21, 20, and 2019. So in order to save time, I have made a bit of a change. I had already started this process last year, but I have gone through the books that I hauled and I have taken out anything by Sue Grafton because I purchased all of the Sue Grafton books because I had gotten rid of them at some point and I decided I actually wanted to have them. So I purchased them for a very different reason. So I, I've gotten them out of my book hauls. I have gotten rid of any book that was purchased for my Pulitzer Prize project. I'm trying to read every book that has won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. And I have brought all of those books into my library, but they're for a project. It's not the same as just going into a bookstore and picking something that seems interesting to read. So I've taken those out as well. I have also taken out anything that was gifted to me because if it was gifted to me, it's again, kind of not the same as me spending my own money on the book with the intention of, uh, you know, I'm holding myself accountable, not other people. So I've taken those out I have also taken out library builders. This is most significant for recent book hauls because last year in January, or actually technically between Christmas and New Year's of 2022, Joel and I redid the library, expanded it, made a little more room. And since then, I have done something, like I purchased every a copy of every book that Louise Erdrich has published because at some point I would like to read all of those books. So I've taken those out of my book hauls because again, that's for like a project somewhere down the line and they were purchased for a very specific reason. I've also removed books that I had already read at the time they were purchased because if I had already read them at the time I purchased them, that means I liked the book enough to want a copy in my library. So it was purchased for a very different reason than me spending money on something that I was hoping to read soon. I have only included books that I purchased for myself with the intention or hope of reading that book sometime soon. That's it. So that's your PSA. That's how these book hauls are going to go in the future moving forward. And, you know, I had already started that process last year, but I just wanted to let you know that that is what we are doing now. So what you see here, what I'm covering might not be the extent of what would be in the book haul if you follow the link in the description box down below to the original book haul video. But that's why some of those books might not be appearing here. I will also note before I begin that I am not going to spend a lot of time talking about what these books are about. If you want a rundown of what it's about, a little bit from the opening of the book, because I like to read the opening of the book in my book hauls, you can follow the link in the description box down below and you will get all of those, all of that information. So let's get going and start with March of 2023. So after I followed all of my guidelines about what I'm going to include and what I'm not going to include, there were only three books left <laughs> for March of 2023. And the first one is Becoming Ted by Matt Cain, which if you follow along, you already know I read. I loved it. It's great. I have been a big fan of Matt Cain recently. I've read The Secret Life of Albert Entwistle. I actually just purchased a new book by him this year and have already read that as well. So this is a success story. I adore Matt Cain and am very happy to continue reading his books. Then we have Whose Names Are Unknown by Sonora Babb. And when I was 
picking out books that I had already read at the time they were purchased. I almost removed this one, but I was glad that I went back and double checked because I thought I had read this at the time I purchased it, but it turns out I read it in May and brought it into my library in March. So I brought it into the library before I read it. Someone told me about this book while I was reading The Grapes of Wrath, and I decided to get a copy, and then I ended up reading it. So it actually does qualify for my purposes here, and I have read it. So I would also really recommend this book to you. I will have a link to my Pulitzer Prize deep dive on The Grapes of Wrath, which really spends a lot of time discover discussing this book as well, in the description box down below, because this is a fantastic book, and I won't spend much more time talking about it, but I really, really, really loved it a great deal. And the final book that qualified for our purposes here is A Minor Chorus, a novella by Billy Ray Belcourt. I did read this book, and thought it was just okay, but I did read it, so that's good. And you know what this means? I read all three of the books that I brought into my library in 2023, at least the ones that qualify. And actually, I think there was one that I had read, but I actually read it before. Oh, it was The Gunkle by Stephen Rowley. I had to take it out because I had actually listened to it on audio and loved it and wanted to have a copy for my library. So I purchased a copy. So I had to take it out. So uh, there technically were four and I had read all four, but I had to take The Gunkle out. So we're only, ha I'm three for three though. That's really great. And, you know, I have kind of thought about trading in a minor chorus because I was just kind of okay on it being honest, but it's fine hanging out in my library right now, and I would absolutely keep Becoming Ted and Whose Names Are Unknown. Actually, you know what's funny? This is not the copy of Whose Names Are Unknown that I hauled last year because a friend came to visit, and Joel and I got to talking about books with her, and I brought up Whose Names Are Unknown. She was really interested in it, so I gave her the copy that I had hauled in March of last year, knowing that I could go to my local used bookstore and get a copy with the credit that I have with them. So I did that. So actually, technically, I have purchased two copies of Whose, Name are Un Whose Names Are Unknown, and that's how much I love it. So the only one in danger of an unhaul, potentially, at some point, is a minor chorus, but it's totally fine staying on my shelf for now. Let's move on to March of 2022, and again, when I go through all the criteria, we end up with four books for this book haul revisit. The first one is Before Night Falls by Rinaldo Arenas, and this is... I can't remember if he wrote it in English or if it's translated. It's translated by Dolores M. Koch. This had been for a project that I was doing with Jen the Librarian, which of course means, of course it was translated, Greg, because it was the LGBTQ book and LGBTQ plus books in translation read along that we were doing. This had been a selection for that. So I purchased a copy with the intention of reading it as part of that. And I did read it and I liked it. It's going to stay in my library. I am happy to have it. Then we have Disoriental by Negar Javadi, translated by, you know, put the translator on the cover. It's translated from the French by Tina Cover. So I started this one on audio and was thinking that I didn't like it on audio. This was also part of the LGBTQ plus in translation read along, but I wanted to pivot to the book. But the end result of that was that as soon as I put down the audio, I ended up never getting back to the book <laughs> and I would still like to. There was great feedback on it from the group. I think a lot of people had tr difficulty starting with this book, but once they got into it, they really loved it. And I don't remember how many people, but I know Jen the Librarian was one of them, had a hard time getting going with the book. Once she got going, she really liked it. So I'm going to hold on to this, and hopefully someday, at some point, I will revisit it. I would probably do it in print rather than try the audio again, because I think that would seem to be much more successful, and for that reason, I would have to keep the book. <laughs> so it's not going anywhere. Then we have All the Young Men by Ruth Coker Burks with Kevin Carr O'Leary. This is a nonfiction book. And Joel read it, but I have not. So hopefully at some point I will get around to it. There has been a little bit of controversy about this book. And I admit that is one thing that has kept me at arm's length from reading it. We'll see. I mean, I'm not thinking about getting rid of it. Joel really did like the book. But there have been speculations that uh, Ruth Coker Bur Burke has stretched the truth. And that this is not really... <clears throat> And that this book is not really grounded in fact. So, 
you know, Joel really did like it, even with taking that grain of salt that you can't necessarily trust a whole lot, all of the books. Joel did really like it, even taking that grain of salt where, you know, you can't really 100% trust everything that's going on, and you have to sort of wonder how much of it is true and how much of it is not. He still enjoyed it. So maybe someday I will still get around to it. We shall see. But I am going to hold on to it, and we'll see if and when I do get to it. Then we have A Place Called Winter by Patrick Gale. I do still want to read this book. I have not gotten around to reading it yet. I keep hearing great things about Patrick Gale, and I just have not actually read it yet. I do have this on my long list for my pile of possibilities for Pride Month. I've actually already started working on that <laughs> because I know th this happens every year. I start working on my pile of possibilities for Pride Month and it's really long. So I have to keep working at it and think about what I can realistically fit in, even if I'm a little ambitious in the month of June and give myself a lot of different options and all of that. So right now it's on the long list. I do think it will stay because I do want to read this book, and now it's been two years since I brought it into my library. So hopefully I will be getting to it in June, but we will have to wait and see what happens with that. I'm really looking forward to it. I've heard so many good things about it. So of the four books that I brought into my library that qualify for our purposes here, in March of 2022, I have only read one, and that was Before Night Falls. I did start Disoriental, but I didn't get far enough to count it as a half. <laughs> so just one out of four. But I haven't unhauled anything. And I don't think I would unhaul anything. I'm not really crushed for space in my nonfiction area. So even if I end up not reading this for another two years... It's fine. The only reason I would unhaul this at this point is if I decide I would not read it. I admit I have thought about trading in Before Night Falls, but I kind of like having it on my shelf for the story and for what it is. So it's really not going anywhere. Not at this point, at least. Now, let's venture back to March of 2021. And when we do that, there are three books that qualify for our purpose. The first one is Last Call. A True Story of Love, Lust, and Murder in Queer New York by Elon Green. I did read this book the same year that I brought it into my library. It's a true crime book. I tend not to do a lot of true crime. However, I do enjoy true crime that really grapples with the sense of trauma and gives stories to the victims. I don't like it when it feels lurid and sensationalistic. And when it sort of glorifies the killer, I don't really enjoy that at all. Think like The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. That, I think, is probably the best true crime book I have ever read. So this really gives the stories of the victims of the crimes who, who were gay men in the 1980s and early 1990s, I believe. So I did read this. I liked it. And then last year... HBO, which I don't know, what do you call it now? Max is the app, has a documentary about this. And the documentary is so good. I would really encourage you, if you have Max in the United States, watch Last Call. It's maybe four or five episodes, and it is so good. So, so good. I think it's actually even better than the book because it goes in a little bit harder on those personal stories and about the trauma uh, that has sort of rippled forward in time uh, about the victims' families and things like that. And it really lets you get to know who these people were. And it's beautiful and it's sad. It's just, it's wonderful. And when I watched that with Joel, I went back and reread Last Call. I did it on audio that time around. And yeah, so. I would actually recommend the series before I would recommend the book, but it is a success story. I've read it twice, so there you go. Then we have Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I am a fan of Kazuo Ishiguro, generally speaking. I have read and absolutely loved Never Let Me Go, and I have read and loved The Remains of the Day. This was the third book of his that I read, and I was just okay on it. So I actually have thought about unhauling this book to make a little bit of space for other things. But part of me also just likes the idea of having a complete Kazuo Ishiguro collection at some point. I also have A Pale View of Hills on the shelf, but I haven't read it yet. And there are some others that I would like to get to. But I admit, I didn't like this enough to really hold on to it. So... 
if at some point I decide I don't need a full Kazuo Ishiguro collection, this would sort of be unnatural for me to trade in, but it's okay right now. But I did read it, so there's that. Which is more than what I can say for What's Mine and Yours by Naima Koster. This did get some good feedback in previous book haul revisits, but ultimately I just decided I probably wasn't likely to read the book in physical form at least. So I found the audio, I think on Scribd, and have it saved in there. And I feel like potentially at some point I will get to it that way, but that's going to be what it is. So of the three books that we have spoken about from March of 2021, I've read two. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> if you know, you know. And I've unhauled one, which was much mine and yours, and I hadn't read it. And at this point, I still have the audio saved, but will I ever get to it? That's kind of the conundrum that I was in with the print book. So at least the audio saved on script doesn't really take up physical space on my bookshelves. Let's move to March of 2020. We're getting bigger here. <laughs> we actually have a couple to talk about here. First is Deacon King Kong by James McBride. And actually, now that I'm holding this up, I'm realizing this doesn't really meet the criteria I have set for myself because this was given to me. But I did really want to read it. And that's why I have an advanced reader's copy of this book. So technically, this doesn't actually qualify for the metrics that I have set for myself, but I've already started we're not going to make adjustments. We're just going to keep going. It's Deacon King Kong by James McBride. I did read this book. I love James McBride. You can see the good Lord Bird face down on my shelf right here. And his new one, The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store, is next to that. I have a collection of short stories that I have not gotten around to reading yet. I need to read his nonfiction book, his memoir about his mother, called The Color of Water. I really love James McBride. I'm just kind of okay on Deacon King Kong. I know a lot of people have loved it more than I did, but... I am just a big fan of James McBride for that reason. Uh, even though I'm iffy on this one, I am definitely willing to have a full collection of his books. Kind of, I'm, a, for, I'm earlier into my Kazuo Ishiguro since I've only read three of his books at this point. Um, so anyway, it's not going anywhere. It's going to stay on my shelf and it will be fine. Then we have Cleanness by Garth Greenwell. I have not read this yet. And I've heard good things about it. I've also heard some really negative things about it. I know someone who started it and DNF'd almost immediately. And what they said about it did kind of put me off and make me feel like I might not get to this. But I hear so many good things about it that I feel like maybe someday I should try it for myself. So that's sort of this limbo space that I'm in with this book right now. He has another book and I'm called What Belongs to You. Thank goodness it's on the cover because I was blanking on it. And I feel like I might start with that one and see if Garth Greenwell is a writer that I like. And then if I respond to that, I might go on to cleanness. But we'll see. That's a, a hurdle I have to get over before I would get to this one. But for now, it's not going anywhere. Then we have The Housekeeper and The Professor by Yoko Ogawa. And the translator's not on the cover. It's translated from the Japanese by Stephen Snyder. In 2020, I was really into these vintage Japan books. I got a couple of them, but this is the only one that came in in the month of March. Beautiful covers. They have the French flaps. I love the French flaps. And they have really nice end papers as well. Just really nicely put together books. I've heard great things about Yoko Ogawa. I have not gotten around to reading this book. I've heard great things about this book as well. So definitely something I would still like to read and will be holding on to. It's a tiny little thing. I don't know how many pages it actually is, but it wouldn't be a bad thing to fit in. 180, it's less than 200 pages. So hopefully I would be able to fit this in at some point, maybe this year, maybe next year, but it's not going anywhere in the meantime. Then we have Writers and Lovers by Lily King. I did ultimately let this book go. I ended up gifting it to someone else who was interested in reading it. I sort of, I did a swap with Brian from Bookish, actually. I don't remember what he sent me. Oh, The Collected Schizophrenias, and I sent him this one. So Brian at Bookish has it now. <laughs> and I've heard kind of mixed things about it. I, if I were going to do it, I would do it on audio. That is something that I have also come to terms with as I have done book haul revisits. It's made me think about what I am likely to read in print versus what I am likely to end up listening to on audio. And this is a book that I have ultimately come to terms with the fact that I would probably listen to it on audio rather than read it in print. 
And then there was The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. I did read that one. And nonfiction is something I particularly will listen to on audio before I will read in print. And I listened to The Splendid and the Vile on audio. That is, is one of the things that has taught me how I am as a reader and that I'm much more likely to do nonfiction on audio. And I thought it was just okay. So I got rid of it. I don't have it anymore. And that's the way it is. Then we have The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel, this brick of a book concluding the Thomas Cromwell series. You can see Wolf Hall right there and bring up the bodies. I did read it. I liked it. I actually read it for the booktube prize. And here it is. I had gotten this copy from the UK because I thought it was a lot prettier than the version that was available in the United States. So of the six books that I brought into my library in March of 2020, I've read three. That's half. That's a pretty, that's pretty good. I'll take it. And I have unhauled two. Those are Writers and Lovers and The Splendid and The Vile. One of which I unhauled after I read it. One of which I unhauled without having read it. And that's just, you know, it is what it is. Now we get to the final month of this book haul revisit, which is March of 2019. There are eight books that qualify for that. The first was Leading Men by Christopher Castellano, which I only read half of, then I DNF'd it. And it's about Tennessee Williams. It is interesting, but I ultimately just was not that into it, so I got rid of it. While I was reading it, though, or just as I was starting it, I started thinking about Tennessee Williams, and I got interested in The Night of the Iguana, which I have not read. It's one of his plays that I have not. So I purchased it. And then I DNF'd the book and put off reading The Night of the Iguana. So I have not read this, but I will at some point. It's a play, so it would read really quickly. So it's fine. I'll hold on to it. I do like Tennessee Williams, so maybe someday I will fit that in. And then we have... Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I did read that book. I was just okay on it. So finally, recently, I decided why am I holding on to this? And I traded it in at my local used bookstore. And while I appreciate the mechanics of what Sally Rooney does as a writer, I don't really respond to her work. So I have not read any of her other books. And that's kind of the way it's gone. Then we have The Best We Could Do, a graphic memoir by T. Bui. And I really loved this book. If you were looking for a graphic memoir, you should check out this book. It's really good. I would absolutely recommend it. I really loved it a great deal. Then there was the um then there was Speak No Evil by Uzadinma Owela. I did read that book and I really did not like it. It turned out to be very different from what the description on the book was, so I unhauled it immediately <laughs> and got it out of the house. We shall say no more about it. Then Cloudburst by Thomas McGuane. Thomas McGuane is a Montana author. You see a lot of his books when you go into bookstores here in Montana. And I like short stories. So I am totally fine holding on to this, but I have not read it yet. And I've thought about it a lot because I see it on my shelf a lot. And I think I really want to read that. So hopefully this will be the year that I get around to it. Maybe next year. But if it ends up being like five years from now or 10 years from now, I'm totally fine holding on to it. It's a beautiful cover, by the way. So it's going to stay in my library and we'll see when I get to it. Then we have The Largesse of the Sea Maiden by Dennis Johnson. This is another story collection. It was published posthumously. I have enjoyed some Dennis Johnson books that I have read. I haven't read too many of them, but I also, as I said, like short stories. So I will hopefully be getting to this one at some point in the future. I have not yet. And then, don't judge me, I purchased Spectacles, a memoir by Sue Perkins, who used to host The Great British Bake Off. And it's it was good. It was just okay in that way that celebrity memoirs sometimes start feeling very honest and open and raw. And then by the time they become an adult and become famous, they start feeling a little bit um, like spin, like a publicist was saying, you don't want to look too bad <laughs> and things like that. But it was fun and I read it and it was, you know, it was good. So of the eight books that I brought into my library in March of 2019, I read four and a half and the half was Leading Men by Christopher Castellani. I have unhauled three, Leading Men, Conversations with Friends and Speak No Evil. And I don't think any of the other ones are in danger of being unhauled, at least not anytime soon. So overall, with my book hauls for the month of March, I brought 24 books into my library, at least of the ones that we are talking about. I've read 13 and a half of them. That's pretty good. 13 and a half out of 24 is a pretty good track record. I will take it. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to complain about that. And most of the success has actually come from the recent book hauls. Like I said, I read three out of three from my March 2023 
and two out of three out of my March 2021. 20, uh, so, you know, I feel like I am learning about myself as a reader and what I'm likely to read, and it's helped me make smarter decisions about what I am going to purchase. I've only unhauled six out of 24, which is not bad. And there you have it. So if you have thoughts about any of these books, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have recommendations for any of the books that I have not read that you think I should prioritize, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.